This screencast will demonstrate how to debug ONOS and applications using the IntelliJ IDEA Workbench. Before debugging ONOS, we need to make sure that it has been launched with the debug option. In our demonstration, we will use the locally run ONOS, so let's start it up. While ONOS is starting up, let's switch to IntelliJ IDEA and from the Run menu, select Edit Configurations. Then, let's add a new configuration by pressing the plus sign and select Remote Configuration. Since we'll be debugging local ONOS, let's name our configuration Local and let's leave the default host address as localhost. If you were debugging ONOS running on another machine, we would simply specify the IP address or DNS name of that machine here. Let's press OK to apply the changes and to close the dialog. Note that the newly created debug configuration has been selected in the upper right hand corner. Now all we need to do to attach the debugger to the ONOS process is to press the debug button. This will immediately open the debug console with the message that IntelliJ has connected to the target virtual machine on localhost and on port 5005. At this point we are ready to start setting breakpoints in our code. In our example we will set some breakpoints in the application command Java, which is a command line handler for the ONOS app command. Let's open this file and let's set a breakpoint on line 60. To customize a breakpoint, we can simply right-click on it and then tailor its properties. One useful customization is to change the breakpoint so that it suspends only the executing thread rather than all threads in the VM. Because the other threads are free to continue execution, you are less likely to disrupt normal processing paths due to missed heartbeats or timeouts. Another useful functionality is the ability to suspend only when a certain condition is met. To turn a breakpoint into a conditional one, we just need to type a Java Boolean expression into the condition field. Let's make our breakpoint conditional on the name of the application ending with the .fwd string. Alternatively, we can turn a breakpoint into a logging one which means that it will log a value of an expression rather than suspend the program execution. Let's try this by setting another breakpoint on line 90 and then turn off the suspend checkbox. Doing that will reveal a number of logging options. We'll choose to log our own text which prints a message with the value of the application ID field. Note how the auto-completion works nicely here as well. Now that we have some breakpoints, let's invoke the ONOS app command and let's see what happens. First, let's activate the proxy ARP application. Note that the debug console contains the message from our logging breakpoint, but that the program execution has not been suspended. Now, Let's activate the reactive forwarding application. Doing that will trigger our conditional breakpoint and the view will automatically switch to IntelliJ IDEA with the active breakpoint line highlighted. At this point we can inspect variables and fields. Note how IntelliJ IDEA shows the values right in the editor where the fields and variables are in use. You can find the full context in the variables view of the debug tool window. Note that beside viewing variables you can also evaluate expressions. For example, we can invoke getApplications method on the object referenced by the service variable, which is currently in the scope of the breakpoint. You can inspect values of fields and variables in stack frames other than the topmost one. For example, here we can switch to the fourth stack frame to see the value of the arguments parameter. Examining the state of deeper stack frames can be useful to understanding the broader context of the current breakpoint. After examining the situation, let's say we are ready to move past this breakpoint. We can either step over, step in or simply continue the execution. 
let's step into the Manage App method. To do that, press the F7 key or click the Step In icon. Note how the variable's context was adjusted to reflect the change scope and how the call stack grew. Now, let's resume execution by pressing the play button or by pressing the F9 key. Let's activate the reactive forwarding application and let's step into the manage app method again. Oh, I really meant to deactivate the reactive forwarding application since it has already been activated. But that's okay. We can easily remedy this by changing the value of an existing field or variable right from IntelliJ IDEA. We'll do that by right-clicking on the command field or by pressing the F2 key and then changing the value to deactivate. Stepping over the next few lines using the F8 key, we can see that the code path taken is the one that reflects the changed value of the command field. Now we will repeatedly step in and step over until we reach the gossip application store deactivate method. There we will evaluate the following expression to prove that our application has indeed been marked as deactivated and then we'll resume the program execution by pressing the F9 key. These were just a few tips on how to debug ONOS as a remote application with IntelliJ IDEA. I hope you found this screencast useful. I encourage you to become closely familiar with your workbench and its various shortcut keystrokes. It will make your debugging session far more efficient. Have a great day and I wish you productive debugging.